Everyone murmured and stared at me. Teachers shook their heads and I could hear people whispering, Oh my god! god. Why wasn't anyone listening what? to me? Please follow me, Miss Annie. Mr. Ali, our maths teacher, said while grabbing me by the arm and forcefully ushering me out of the exhibition hall. We were escorted by a few other teachers to the principal's office before they all stopped, leaving me with our very angry principal. She slowly stared me down, starting from my forehead to my toenails. I couldn't keep up the staring match, so I stared at my arm and rubbed it. Mr. Lee had held me so tightly that he left a red mark of his fingers on my arm. It hurt badly. Miss Annie, hmm, I have no words, she sighed. Tears welled in my eyes. All I wanted was to be very pretty. Now this? You have been expelled from the school with immediate effect. Please pack your personal items, leave, and never come back. She handed me a letter and said, Give this to your parents as an explanation. You can leave now. I collected the letter and raced to my class. Thank goodness it's empty, I sighed. I picked up all of my personal effects and left the school angrily. Silly people, I thought. They have absolutely no idea what they've just lost. I decided to spend some time at the park before going home since my parents wouldn't be back home anyway. I bought myself an ice cream cone and sat down on the swing to think and cry. I recalled the whole embarrassment and I couldn't believe that such a thing had actually happened to me. I remembered being escorted to the principal's office by Mr. Lee, who used to like me very much. But now, he held my arm like I was the worst person to have ever existed on Earth. I thought the principal loved me too, but she gave me that letter so quickly. I didn't even see her type or print it. Did they have draft samples of expulsion letters? Even if they did, all she had to do was put in my name or my parents' name. I didn't see her write anything. I didn't even see her seal up any letter either. Something was definitely wrong, but I didn't have the time to think about it now. I had to be home before my parents, so I'd be the first person to break the news to them. How do you tell your parents that you got kicked out of school just because you were too pretty? Hi, my name is Annie, but it used to be Anna. I changed my name to Annie because of the bad memories that the name Anna was associated with. I'd like to know what you think, though. Which name do you prefer and why? Anna or Annie? Once I tell you my story, you'll understand why I chose to slightly alter my given name and I'm sure you'll respect my decision. Before we proceed, hurry now and like this video, subscribe to this channel and turn on post notifications so you'll always be in the know. It started with my former high school, Old Trafford High. I was known as the class loser because I didn't look like other girls. I was a little bit on the plump side and my parents made me wear these funny looking rainbow colored braces. My classmates gave me a nickname, Anna the Rainbow, and they always used to make fun of me. Oh look, it's Anna, the rainbow coming at you! Someone would scream whenever I entered the class and everyone would burst into laughter. The teachers never tried to stop them from bullying me, instead they found it entertaining and often joined the students to laugh. I was bullied and insulted. I was forced to do so many people's homework, to carry books for popular girls while walking behind them, to clean used gum from under people's desks with my so-called rainbow-colored teeth, and so many more irritating things that you can't even imagine. On one particular occasion, the most popular guy in school brought me to the front of the class, gave me a brush, and told me to show the class how I brushed my rainbow-colored teeth. He assured me that the brush was clean and they just wanted to know if I did it differently. I said I didn't, but the whole class insisted I prove it to them. And so I had to. I was so scared and shaky, but I put the brush in my mouth and started brushing. After doing it a few minutes, everyone started cheering and laughing. They chanted, Anna the, the rainbow, rainbow uses, uses a dirty, dirty toilet brush to brush her teeth. She's so irritating. Ew! I couldn't believe it. My classmates had given me a dirty toilet brush and allowed me to put it in my mouth. A teacher was in class while all of this happened, and he didn't even bother doing anything. I threw the brush away, rinsed my mouth with soap and water, cried a little, and then went back to my seat. What else could I do? Nobody cared about me. 
When I got home, my parents saw my red, swollen face and asked me what happened. I told them. I have good news, Anna. My dad started. I have been promoted. We're moving out of this town to a better place. We're getting a bigger house and two cars. And you know what the best news is? He asked. What is it? I screamed. I couldn't believe my ears. This was the best news that I had ever heard in my entire short life. We can finally afford to get you invisible braces. No more weird rainbow metal clunky stuff on your beautiful teeth. I was so happy that I started shedding tears. It's okay, Anne. My mom said, inching closer. I know how you feel. I know what you've been experiencing in school, and we're sorry about that. We're sorry we couldn't do better for you, and we're grateful that we've all been given the chance to start over once more. This time, we need to all try to do better and be better. I couldn't say anything, I just kept crying. As we arrived at our new city, I ditched everything that had to do with who I used to be. My clothes, shoes, gadgets, the annoying rainbow braces, and even my name. I wasn't going to be Anna the Rainbow anymore. I had become Annie, the Queen a leader in her own right. While my parents searched for the best and closest high school they could find me, I used all the free time I had to learn makeup and hair setting. I changed my diet and became very consistent with exercise. As a result of this, I lost a lot of weight and started looking better. I was determined to be the new high school queen in my new school. I wanted to show them a different way of doing things. When I stepped into the hallway on my first day of school, Everyone stopped and stared at me as I graciously glided through the hallway. I gave them a smile and a nod, affirming all of their thoughts and beliefs. A group of three girls stopped me and looked at me menacingly. And who do you think you are? They asked with folded hands. I took off my sunglasses for just a few minutes so I could get a good view of who was talking. I had never seen so much pink in one place in my entire life. As I put my sunglasses back on, I grabbed a cotton candy stick from one of their hands, took a huge bite from it, and gave it back to them. Your new queen, I replied as I walked away. Their eyes were so wide that I almost burst into laughter there and then. Stupid bullies, I thought. The next few months were a breeze. Everyone loved me. From teachers to students to support staff, janitors, nurses, everyone. I had achieved my dream, no more bullying and no more rainbow braces. I decided to study more because I wanted to make my parents proud. I also decided to be nice to everyone. I didn't want to become just like the bullies I hated so much. I read day and night and my hard work paid off because I scored all A's in my classes. What I didn't know that while I was trying everything I could to become the best version of myself and give people the best experience of their inner selves, a group of three girls were hating on me in the background. They called themselves the Pretty Clique, known for bullying and extortion, and they were the queens of the school before my arrival. On the day of our science exhibition fair, I was trembling like crazy. I'd worked so hard to prepare and the day had finally come. I couldn't wait to show the inspectors my creation because I knew it was the project that would get the golden trophy. The inspectors approached me and told me to proceed with my show. As I was about to speak, the principal rushed into the hall with some security guards and everything went to a standstill. The guards started searching everyone's school bags and I just stood there bored and angry because they were delaying me. The next thing I knew, I had been accused of stealing wads of cash from the principal's office. Everyone was looking at me with surprise plastered on their faces. I was screaming and nobody was hearing me. Mr. Lee was escorting me out of the hall. I was in the principal's office and I got expelled. I didn't even understand what had happened, but in less than 10 minutes, my whole life had been destroyed. My parents were very angry when I got home. After telling me how disappointed they were in me, they told me that they couldn't let me go out and embarrass them again so I'd be homeschooled from now on. I was also grounded for six months. I cried as I went back to my room. I never thought someone's life could drastically change in just a few minutes. A few weeks into my homeschooling life, I got an email with the subject, Hello, thief. It read, I hope you enjoy being homeschooled, you freaking thief. That's what you get for messing with us. Yours sincerely, the pretty click. 
P.S. Don't bother showing this to anyone because they won't believe you. I showed this to my parents and they finally believed me. My punishment was lifted. I had to find a way to get these girls to confess on camera. After pondering it over, I decided to set up a mean girls competition where students could enroll anonymously and say all the mean things they'd ever done. The person who had done the worst things would get a thousand dollars. It was an anonymous competition, so nobody would see the names or faces of the girls applying. <laughs> what nobody knew was that there was a special plan crafted by yours truly to get the pretty clique to confess. I set up a secret system to record their faces and voices while they confessed their various crimes. My plan worked and the pretty clique confessed to every mean thing they'd ever done and to whom they'd done to including stealing money from the principal's office and hiding it in my school bag. They had no idea they were being recorded. What I didn't expect, though, was for the principal to be a part of the mess. Apparently, the principal of the school had been using the pretty clique to extort money from the students and giving them a tiny cut. So when they approached her with a plan to get rid of me, she didn't hesitate. They planned the whole thing together. After gaining this new knowledge, I stormed the school during a non-school day. I was well aware that the board of directors were holding a meeting on that day, and that was the exact reason I came. I planned with the video guy, and we quickly switched the boring video that they were watching off and replaced it with the recording of the Pretty Cleek's confessions. We also locked the doors so no one could leave until the video came to an end. Everyone was shocked, and the principal was immediately dismissed from the school and arrested. The pretty clique later came to my house to apologize to me. Hey, Annie, the lead girl said. We're sorry about everything we did to you. We didn't really mean to get you expelled, but you see... She stopped and scratched her neck. The second girl looked at her and rolled her eyes. You see, the thing is... She continued more boldly. We didn't have a choice. We had to stay in power so we could keep collecting money from the students and sending it to the principal. The principal threatened us saying that she would kick us out of school if we didn't find a way to get our power back. You could have just reported her to the board, you know. But it's fine. I forgive you. I smiled at them. So here's the sitch. The third one, who was always chewing gum, finally spoke. Uh, this is embarrassing, but we want you to lead us. She quickly turned away. I laughed out loud. <laughs> of course I will. You will? The first girl asked. Absolutely, but... First of all, we will no longer be called the pretty clique. No more pink. I hate that color. Wear whatever you feel like wearing to school as long as you look cute and decent. You must all tell me your real names and finally... I paused and gave them a mischievous smile. Finally what? The gum girl asked, nervous. Let's go take pictures in the principal's office. And with that, we ran off. I taught my three new friends how to be nice to everyone and still get them to respect you, how to have fun without getting in trouble, and how to be genuine friends to each other. I was admitted back in school and continued being the most popular girl because of my kindness and smartness. I became a role model for every student. Like this video and subscribe to our channel if this is a good story. Make sure you watch another video on our channel after this and before you go, Tell us who you think was the worst person in this story. Is it the former principal of my new school, the pretty clique, Mr. Ali, or everyone at my former school? I took it and grimaced at the person looking back. My face looked like a parade of colors, not sure about which direction they needed to go. At this point, it was like looking at a totally different person. Mom was a top prosthetic makeup artist, but when it came to normal makeup, she was terrible. Thanks, Mom. I shot her a fake smile and grabbed my book for school. Don't forget, boys only want one thing from you. 
And being an ugly girl is better than being a beautiful one. Mom shouted as I walked out of the front door. Hi, my name is Tammy. Don't continue watching this video until you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Oh yeah! Also, tap that notification bell so you will know when more amazing stories are out. Genevieve, my best friend, giggled at me when I walked up to her at the school gate. So, your mom is at it again. Why don't you just wash it off and reapply the makeup before leaving school? Jen looked at me and wiggled her eyebrows playfully. But don't you remember that one time when I did wash it off? Yeah, and your mom grounded you for a week. The same week we had to go to the Jonas Brothers. And let's not forget the threat of being homeschooled and never seeing the light of day again if I ever remove this hideous makeup she painted on my face. Let's meet in the cafeteria for lunch. Jen smiled. Yes, and we can talk about the concert coming up. We both squealed before saying goodbye and heading to class. So, what are you wearing to the concert? Jen asked as we sat down by the table in the cafeteria. I'm not sure. I've been saving my allowance to get a new outfit. Maybe Mom can drop us to the mall this Saturday. That would be great! I haven't been to the mall in ages. But 